Now, what do you think about these guys that are talking about bringing animals back? De-extinction is, to me, it's fascinating. Is that worth it? Because it's something we wiped out in the last hundred years. A huge parasitic leech with rows of sharp teeth that's been swimming around for millions of years. A strange fish that produces mass amounts of slime. These creatures seem like they're from another time, and in a way, they are. These are terrifying prehistoric ocean creatures still alive today. First up, we've got the coelacanth. This fish is seriously cool, but also a little creepy looking. What makes it so interesting is that it was thought to have been long extinct, gone for 65 million years alongside the dinosaurs, but then in 1938, fishermen off the coast of South Africa pulled one up and Boom, you had a alive and kicking living dinosaur. These fish have been around for 360 million years, and honestly, you can kind of tell. They're huge, sometimes growing over six feet long. They have thick lobed fins that make them look, I don't know, just something really ancient looking about them. And here's something really cool. They seem to be a kind of link between sea creatures and land animals. The way their fins move is a bit like legs of amphibians, which hints that they could be a distant relative to the first creature that crawled onto land. Coelacanths are still found today, mostly off the coast of Madagascar and around Indonesia, but there's no denying that they are one of the creepiest and coolest survivors from the past. The lamprey. These creatures are definitely one of the most terrifying things still swimming around today. There are lots of different types, but the one most people know about is the parasitic lamprey, which looks like a giant horrifying leech. And that's basically exactly what it is. They've been around for hundreds of millions of years, and they're as creepy as they sound. The lamprey is a parasitic species. It latches onto its victim with its circular sucker-like mouth, which is lined with rows and rows of sharp teeth. And once attached, it starts rasping away at its prey, eating its flesh to access all the red stuff inside, leaving these huge, ugly scars on their victims. Lampreys are some of the most primitive fish alive today. In fact, a lamprey fossil dating back 360 million years was found in 2006, making it a living fossil that scientists have used to study ancient evolution. The sea lamprey has earned a reputation as a pest in places like the Great Lakes in North America where it kills many of the fish that, attaches, that it attaches itself to. Next on the list, we have the pygmy right whale. This is one of the rarest whales you can find on Earth today, and they've been around for about 23 million years. They've only been spotted alive and at sea a handful of times, and because there aren't a large number of specimens and DNA for the animal to pull from, there's still a lot that science doesn't know about them. Exactly what they eat and how they behave is still a bit murky. They're very small, for whales anyway, only measuring about 21 feet in length. Yeah, only, but for a whale that is pretty small. They live in the cool waters of the southern hemisphere. They're said to have formed from baleen whales millions of years ago, and as rare as they are now, things may get even worse. As oceans continue growing warmer, the population of these whales is going to drop even further. The Nautilus. The Nautilus is a mollusk that's lived in the sea for 500 million years, thriving during a time when the continents were still taking shape. Originally, there were 10,000 different species of this animal, but today only a few survive in the Western Pacific Ocean and the coast of the Indian Ocean. Chambered Nautilus, a specific type of the creature, use their 90 retractable suckerless tentacles equipped with are called chemina sensors to hunt for fish, crabs, and lobsters. The tentacles help them pick up food scents in their environment. Using a beak-like mouth, they pry open tough shells to access their prey. They also regulate the amount of water and air in their shell through an internal tube called a hyponome. These are such strange but really beautiful looking creatures. The striped markings on them, just very eye-catching. Hagfish. These are one of the most bizarre and ancient creatures still alive today. They've been around for over 300 million years. And, you know, just to put this into perspective, this means they were swimming around before dinosaurs came about. These things are often called slime eels. As for why, I'll get to that in a moment. Now, they aren't actually eels, and some scientists even question whether they should be classified as fish. One of the most fascinating things about the hagfish is its unique anatomy. They do have a skull, but they completely lack a spine. They also have two brains 
And I don't think I've ever heard of a creature with two brains before. That's crazy. Hagfish spend their nights scavenging for food, feeding mostly on the carcasses of larger animals that sink to the ocean floor. They have a strong sense of smell, allowing them to locate food sources. In 2011, researchers made a pretty interesting discovery. Hagfish can actually absorb nutrients through their skin and gills. This makes them one of the only vertebrates known to have this ability. It's especially useful when food is scarce. It just increases the surface area available to absorb nutrients. But as promised, of course, we gotta get to the reason behind the slime eel nickname. Well, these things have the ability to produce this thick, sticky slime that can clog the gills of other fish, making it nearly impossible for them to be eaten. This defense mechanism is so effective that hagfish have virtually no natural enemies, making them one of the ocean's most resilient animals. The lancet fish has a very prehistoric look. They got these sharp teeth and that big sail uh, dorsal fin on the top. And this is its scientific name, Alaposaurus ferrex. If I didn't know any better, I would think that was a dinosaur. These fish can get pretty big too. Some can grow up to two meters or about six foot six. They can be found in nearly all oceans, except for the polar regions. They're aggressive hunters feeding on smaller fish and squid, but they've also been known to eat members of their own species when no other options are around. I'd never heard about these guys until today, but I'm really glad that I've discovered them. They may be on my list of uh, top 10 favorite fish now. I, I love the way they move through the water water too. The sturgeon is another ancient creature that's been around since the early Jurassic period. Now, these fish are mainly known for being the source of caviar. They're unfortunately endangered today thanks to overfishing. Now, I didn't know how big these guys uh, can get though. Some species of sturgeon can grow over 20 feet long, making them as large as a great white. Sturgeon feed on small animals from the ocean floor and they're generally pretty harmless to humans, but just because of how massive they are, they can pose a threat. On Intended, but still, there have been cases where sturgeons have leapt out of the water and landed on boats, causing injury or, in rare cases, even death. The sawfish. Now, this is a pretty remarkable survivor from the Cretaceous period, and they are unfortunately also critically endangered today. We can find them in both saltwater and freshwater. It's even been spotted up to 100 kilometers inland in rivers and creeks. They can get pretty huge, growing up to 7 meters or 23 feet long. They do look like strange sharks, but they're actually more closely related to rays. You can kind of tell by their, their, their lower, their belly part. They look a bit like a stingray. Also, they have a really funny mouth. Anyway, they're most distinctive feature is what can only be described as a chainsaw on their snout, which is not only a weapon, but also a highly sensitive organ covered in what are called electrosensitive pores. The sawfish can detect prey even with poor eyesight. These things are generally pretty peaceful despite having, you know, a chainsaw on their face, but they can get dangerous if they're provoked. Fascinating fossil discovery also revealed that prehistoric sawfish were likely food sources for the massive carnivorous dinosaur Spinosaurus. They found vertebrae from a sawfish lodged in one of their teeth. The alligator gar. It's not actually an alligator, but a massive fish from the gar family, and it's one of the largest freshwater fish in North America. Found mostly in the southern United States, they're ancient creatures that have been around for about 100 million years. They can grow up to 10 feet long and weigh over 400 pounds. With their thick armored scales and their large fang-filled mouths, they do look more like a crocodile than a fish, or an alligator than a fish. There are plenty of photos of uh, fishermen holding up these things and sometimes it takes two fully grown men to hold one. In one incident, a man dangling his feet off a dock had an alligator gar latch onto his foot and try to pull him under the water. Now fortunately he did manage to escape, but there's a very good chance that these fish might have done this before and that's uh, the reason behind several mysterious drownings. And finally we have tadpole shrimp. Picture a prehistoric sea dwelling creature and something like this is probably exactly what's gonna come to mind. Tadpole shrimp are ancient crustaceans that have existed for an incredibly long time, dating back to the Triassic period around 220 million years ago. They belong to the Nautostraca group and have kept a remarkably unchanged appearance throughout their history. They're kinda crazy looking. They have this really cool shield looking carapace that covers their bodies. And despite their ancient origins, they've continued to thrive in the modern world. They're adapted 
surviving in environments with fluctuating water levels, often appearing in habitats prone to temporary drying. They have a unique survival strategy during rough conditions too. In response to drought or other not so favorable environment factors, they enter a state of dormancy, forming cysts that protect them until conditions become suitable again. This is a large part of what's helped them endure for as long as they have. Well, with all that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.